thanks everyone for your patience. Um, thank you, John, for the opportunity to share a bit more about uh, about uh, a DBS. So uh, let me um, give you an introduction about myself. So um, I used to be the um, head of ecosystems uh, for DBS about the last two years, and uh, I've recently changed my role. So I now run customer management analytics. Um, that's my new title on the uh, sheet. Um, so, but I want to just share with you the journey that we went through uh, in building what was at that time the world's biggest banking uh, uh, platform for APIs. Okay, so let's uh, proceed from there. Okay, so a bit of history, right? So about two years, two, three years back, uh, when we first started um, uh, looking at APIs and ecosystems, right? Um, and we were looking and saying, what should we do as a bank, as a strategy? Because um, APIs was a big thing. It was, it was the, the new hype, the new uh, hot target. And uh, we sat down with uh, our CEO, uh, Gupta, and uh, he, he turned around and said, you know, let's, let's put a big, hairy, audacious goal down on paper and say, let's go out there and do something, right? And um, he turned around and he said, let's do 100 APIs in 100 days published out to the world. Now, uh, when we did that, um, I think um, most of us, and me in particular, we, like, we were like shocked. But we set out to do that, right? And so in, in 2017, I think not just the, the, the big hairy goal, but more importantly, the, the strategic API piece um, became a key foundation for DBS, right? And uh, we started the journey and we started building our portal out. And uh, we actually did publish 100 APIs. Um, and today uh, we have more than 700 APIs uh, in use and exposed all around the world, uh, sorry, all around uh, Southeast Asia, which is where, where DBS platform is, right? And this includes both consumer banking APIs as well as institutional banking or uh, financial uh, uh, B2B type APIs, okay? More importantly, beyond just publishing APIs, we also then took it to uh, uh, look at how we could make the API ecosystem work um, beyond just having a portal, right? So we, in addition to the API portal, we also have our own ecosystem partnerships, which we actively go out and work with uh, third parties. Um, and we broker uh, partnerships and uh, they, use, they then use our APIs and we also use the APIs. So an example of that is um, we have a marketplace where we link with uh, uh, some large uh, property portals and uh, we link with them to get their uh, property listings. Uh, at the same time, they consume our APIs for uh, loan applications and also for uh, uh, payments and um, uh, uh, refer referrals, right? So we work closely hand in hand with uh, uh, third parties to bring up consumption and usage of the APIs, right? And this whole ecosystem platform became a key player across our DBS uh, in, in all the markets that we play in, right? So today we have we, we play in uh, Hong Kong, in Singapore, of course, we're the largest bank in Singapore, Indonesia, and India, right? Now, based on that, right, um, actually our portals was, was quite successful and we won a whole slew of awards, right? I mean, like we gave you a sample here. You know, we had a good design award, we had innovations award, uh, we had the innovators award from global finance, and it was all very, very um, happy and proud. And I think uh, we did a great job at that point of time with what we had, right? But as we started to grow and get more and more utilization and consumption, we started to learn a lot of new lessons and more importantly, challenges around our APIs, right? Uh, one key thing was this, right? As we integrated more and more with uh, other consumers, we realized that the testing, integration, and upgrade journey became more complex, right? You know, um, unlike pure technology firms who publish an API and uh, had very strong policies around version control and around uh, how we manage upgrades, we were still learning how to do this as a tech company. Because traditionally as a bank, um, most of the time we consume or we use our services internally and we are able to control the environment. We're able to turn around and say, oh, I want to conduct a UAT or I want to conduct testing, uh, get both systems in place, run it. But as we work more and more with third parties, right, um, this became a, a challenge, right? This became different from how we did things uh, as usual, right? And these are things that we were learning. How do we, do, how do we scale and onboard? Uh, in addition, 
when we built our APIs, there's always the internal view or inside out view, right? Where um, we think that our APIs are what people want to use, right? We provide this service, we provide this capability. And then we realized that as the capabilities were utilized out in the real world, right? The extra, our partners have a very different point of view of how they want to run their customer journey. How do they serve their customers? And it is that journey that really differentiates our partners from their competitors, right? And that difference would change the way we built our APIs as well and how we integrate it with our customers, or in this case, our partners, right? And so these were things that we learned uh, from the early days of 2017 all the way until uh, the current um, uh, uh, marketplace and current uh, API portals, right? Um, the other big challenge that I think we picked up was around uh, our legacy infrastructure, right? Now, as every bank will definitely have a whole slew of different systems providing different services, right? Uh, we have a mix of open systems, we have a mix of mainframes, we have a mix of uh, um, uh, different architectures and different capabilities. Now, one of the biggest challenges that we had is, uh, you know, when you publish APIs, uh, it always sounds simple to wrap a, a SOAP or wrap a SOI and uh, expose it as a REST API, right? But then inherently, the more and more um, wrappers we use, the more the architecture is not natively uh, scalable, the more challenges we get. And in this case, uh, what happens is that success actually starts to bring on a whole different set of problems that we never anticipated or we didn't anticipate at that point of time, right? And so uh, will the legacy infrastructure be able to scale? Um, we had uh, things like uh, MQ and so on, where uh, we had planned capacity, uh, which is a very, I think, uh, archaic approach, right? Because you can't plan capacity uh, if you have an API where it get surges, right? And this is where we start to see uh, different strategies and different approaches to how we handle this. And, and we learned all this uh, throughout our journey. Uh, it was, this, these were not things that we built up from scratch. Okay. So let me take us on further to the journey and what we started to uh, build on and learn from our heady days of uh, having uh, the world's best uh, or world's largest banking services API portal, right? So I think a key lesson learned, and I alluded to that earlier on, was the idea of different strokes for different people. As we do, our, as we build our APIs, our partner on the other side will vary and change. There will be the B2B, there will be B2C and there will be B2B2C. Now, what does that mean, right? Some of our partners, right, um, are going to be other corporate, uh, other large corporates, or in some cases, government institutions. Now, in this situation, right, the government institution will uh, have a different need or a different requirement, especially around how we secure our data, how we manage our flows, how we authenticate, which can be quite different from a B2C environment or a B2B2C environment. Uh, very key around this is that um, we find that the uh, the need to move to open APIs may actually contradict with uh, the need for protecting of protection of customer data um, when we work with our government agencies, right? And so ultimately, right, the journey that the partner is going through really changes some of how we build our APIs, and it's no longer an idea of one size fits all. We could have multiple versions of an API performing the same function, but for different purposes or different, more importantly, different types of partners. And this level of uh, design and design thinking did not always come in at the start of our uh, journey, right? Um, so today we have evolved to say, you know, we have a, 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 a gold platform, a silver platform, and so on, right? And these are things that we, we do, right? On top of security, we also uh, started to look at the uh, how do the services interact with each other, right? Now, this may be uh, something that uh, uh, would be obvious today, right? Because no single API exists by itself, right? Um, in the previous presentation, where we talked about uh, uh, the custody service, well, obviously there are different things. There are inquiries, you've got updates, you've got trades, and, and so on, right? But even within, um, a uh, set of APIs or a set of uh, journeys, right? We get unexpected uh, uh, use utilization or usage. Uh, I'll take an example here of how a particular service uh, was built by one of our partners, 
So we have a partner who wanted to uh, offer cash services um, through, uh, say, convenience stores, right? So what they did was basically you could walk into a convenience store and you could uh, uh, withdraw cash, right? Um, but what they used from us was mainly our fund transfer capability, which triggered a fund transfer from one uh, uh, account to the partner's account or to the uh, convenience store's account so that the cash withdrawal could take place. Now, we didn't quite get the end-to-end -end journey. But and, and, and until we work with the partner more closely, that's when we started to see how people bundle our APIs and our services into a different service that they offer to the customer, to the end user. And with that bundling, right, the journey changes, right? And this, this innovation that we see is not something that you control as a bank. Uh, not all banking services are, uh, you know, strictly cash withdrawals, strictly, strictly uh, fund transfer or strictly a payment. And we see a lot of this innovation uh, in the uh, retail space, right? Because um, it is a, a relatively easy space to get into. There are lots of VCs, a lot of money slushing around. And with that innovation, right, it then changes the behavior that uh, uh, we have to support as a bank. Uh, and I think that's one of the big uh, learnings that we picked up over time in the, uh, in the API industry. Now, technology, scalability, and adaptability. When we started out with our 100 APIs in 100 days, uh, we were just building APIs. But we soon realized that building APIs and publishing them um, leads to a kind of a field of dreams mentality. The idea that uh, we would um, basically you know, build and people will use it. Now, that's really not how things work. We really have to be actively going out and you know, marketing but actually working with partners on how to make them successful using our APIs, right? to give them a reason to come to us because pretty much every bank has some level of API capability, right? And, and so the, the success of the API is based on how we work with our partners uh, and also um, how do we then make their journeys um, uh, suitable for their customers. And so with that, right, we, 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 we worked with them and we modified and we learned a lot. And those journeys are things that now we adopt inside as well, all right? Um, from a, uh, a payment journey, we started to uh, have many different variants with earmarking, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, um, different language support. I mean, we support Golang, Java. Uh, we have hosted payment pages, right? So we, we started to branch out even just with one API to ensure that, you know, um, the consumption or, or we drove the consumption uh, by working with different partners. And I think that's something that uh, if you're going on an API journey, this is something you got to think about. How do you enable? How do you become almost a technology service company in some sense, right? Um, beyond just publishing and, uh, and having that linkage, right? And then, of course, uh, the last point, scalability on any given Wednesday. We, we really saw something uh, quite interesting, in a sense you could say a bit strange, in that uh, when we were pushing our APIs out, we had certain APIs which basically searched every single Wednesday, right? And we would be scrambling uh, and, our, and our, our machines would scale up and we would start to monitor, right? And so we started to realize that some of, uh, one of our partners in particular um, ran a promotion every single Wednesday. Every single Wednesday, the volume will go to triple, quadruple, 10 times the normal volume, right? And this is something that you don't know of or you, you, you can't control because, I mean, you're working with so many different partners and they're all running their own marketing campaigns and their own uh, 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 businesses, right? But when the thing surges, right, uh, and, it's, and it can impact your capacity internally or your capacity uh, across your, your, your systems, that's when you start to realize, hey, you know, I'm in a whole different world or I'm in a whole different business, right? Uh, how do you work and make sure your infrastructure can handle 10x, 100x? Uh, but also, how do you then work with your partners to make sure that you don't become the bottleneck for them? Uh, and that's, that's really been an interesting part around the scalability and adaptability. At the same time, of course, you can't pay for tons of infrastructure, um, and uh, work with the partner to say forecast your demand and so on, right? So this is this is a, a, a journey that we have gone into to say 
hey, um, how do we work with partners uh, with, in, and their businesses uh, and plan with them their business? And how do we do that in, uh, internally as well as externally? And this is where I'm, I'm like, I go back to the title, right? Different strokes for different people. So it's going on an API journey is about how do we start to think for our partners and then for them to their customers and how do we then work together? And it's this different strokes for different people that uh, really, really change the mindset and thought process uh, of the tech teams uh, working with me as well as with our partners. John, you, you've given a great uh, view of uh, DBS's evolution from the uh, just build it um, to how you think about who are the users and who are the partners uh, for uh, for the, the APIs. Also, the, um, about I guess also there's a lesson there for how how you monitor. Uh, your partners and what they're trying to achieve, um, and uh, what impacts that's going to have on on your own uh, your own infrastructure and your own business. Uh, so, I, I guess in, in the the future of, of DBS is that um, how how are you seeking to to engage with your your partners to um, just as a, as a closing statement? What what do you see as as next? for the DBS uh, API journey. Right, so um, I'll give you a quick one. Uh, I only have four slides, so I have this slide and one more which closes mm -hmm. it up. Um, but uh, let me um, put to you what I think everybody needs to uh, think about on the API journey. And I've called this eating your own dog food, right? Very often, right, internal uh, usage of APIs or the APIs that we publish externally is very limited because, I mean, we have advantages working internally with ourselves, right? But I really tell people, you know, you've got to be eating your own dog food, right? Um, we have DBS API subscribers, but our own apps have to take the same journeys. They have to see how easy it is to onboard. How easy is it to, to, to use or to test or to build or to consume or to scale? Because until we started doing that, right, we, we were learning lessons the hard way, right? So in, in this case, right, um, when we started putting all our DBS apps, consuming it as almost as if they were external parties, right? Um, that's when we really, really started to pick up, you know, things that we don't see or take for granted because, you know, I'm a senior guy, I can push a button and things will happen, right? But if you're an external partner, you don't have those buttons. And that's really uh, another piece of advice I give people. How do you consume your own dog food and then see and then fix those problems because those same problems or challenges are what your subscribers are going to see, right? So um, to end it, and I know it's a late, uh, where do we go next? And I think John, you has alluded to that quite clearly, right? Data first. You need to see what is going on. Learn and understand, right? And we push up APIs, and if you don't have the observability and you don't see the patterns of behavior, that's where you, you, you're you going to get lost in the, uh, in the woods, right? Um, data, very, very important, right? Um, observe you know, how the APIs are behaving, how our businesses, our partners are seeing it, how they're consuming it, uh, knowing you know, when do we go bespoke, what are the journeys, where do we see different APIs bundled together and how do we then string them together in a way that's very, very friendly for the journey. Um, going cloud first, and uh, in this case, when I talk about cloud first, I, I know most people take cloud first and say public cloud, AWS, GCP, but I'm, I'm not going to put that as a target for everybody. What I'm going to tell people is that your infrastructure must behave like you are on a public cloud. You've got to be able to have auto scaling up and down, measurement, observability. Don't use the word as a service, as a cash phrase, right? As a service means if you use, if you've ever used any of the public cloud services, right? And you, 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 you see how they behave and how they link with uh, all the other services that they have. That's something that you've got to aspire to. Right, because that's how you can provide a real service. And of course, lastly, from a, a API perspective, right, um, do API first, right? Get the entire team, internal, external, every single platform, every application thinking API first, build contracts, independence, consume your own contracts, consume your APIs. Think about that, make it, and, and really build that into the DNA of the company. Because that's where when we talk about having a strong API ecosystem, it's not an API ecosystem with the external world, it's an API ecosystem internally, externally, everywhere, API everywhere. Now, is this the right strategy? Well, I guess you'll check back soon and we'll, we'll see, right? Thanks very much for those insights. Actually, um, 
we had a speaker from DBS yesterday talk about uh, building a data-driven uh, decision-making organization. So that's a, a, your, your comments about that are a, a great linkage to, to that. Thanks, yeah. thanks very much, John, for, for, uh, for, for those insights.